policy by interrogating how it affects you through in-depth conversations with envoys on their states and missions work in the country premiered on KTN News and after broadcasting 11 episodes we're taking a break. The Diplomat season one officially ends today and as we head to prepare for season two which we promise to come back bigger and better we wish to thank our guests, our team for the hard work and dedication, as well as you viewers for the steadfast support. Here is a snippet of the 11 episodes that our Mwangi Maina filmed with various ambassadors and I commissioners since the inception of The Diplomat. Take a look. Let us examine the strengths and the weaknesses of this relationship. I think Balozi Simon, he really built something up here. Um, I think we have a very strong partnership with, with Kenya and we want to strengthen it even more. Um, it has many, many aspects. We are, we are working with, with the Kenyan government on the political front and we do want to strengthen that even more and have it much more of a, a partnership of equals. We still have a very, very strong um, program in, in, in cooperation with many projects in the field working and, and helping Kenya develop and become um, an upper middle income country or even a high income country and um, we're working on, on humanitarian issues um, up uh, in, in the north where the, where the refugee camps are, both on the refugees and with the host communities because you have to see the two together. There, there are parts that we need to strengthen on the political front. Uh, I think we can go farther and have much more of a, of a real dialogue and that's what we're working on now. I think the, the visit of the president of the European Council earlier this year, a month ago actually, I think that, that really provided some impetus to say, no, let's take this to the next level. How interesting has your diplomatic adventure been, you know, putting in mind that you had more than three countries yeah. in the Eastern Africa and, of course, Horn of Africa? I'd been, to, I'd been to this part of the world, you know, quite a few times before I took up my role as ambassador here, so I certainly was familiar with East Africa. Ireland actually has a very big footprint diplomatically here. Um, we've, we've, we've about eight embassies in, in East and Southern Africa and I've visited most of those um, but certainly Kenya I mean it's such a geopolitically of course Kenya is really really important it's um, economically it's very important in terms of you know in terms of East Africa it's the economic powerhouse here um, and there's very good relations between Kenya and Ireland very deep relations that go back more than a hundred years so having the opportunity to come here to build on the amazing work that colleagues have done since our embassy reopened five or six years ago and have the opportunity to advance you know in a mutually beneficial way Ireland and Kenya's interests through you know we work with Kenya on um, supporting Kenya in terms of education agriculture private sector engagement but really what, what, what we bring I think that's probably a little bit unique is Ireland is bringing our experience and sharing it with Kenya. Balozi, let us now dive into the diplomatic issue focusing on uh, the Finland-Kenyan relations, which goes all up to, uh, to 1965 up to date. How would you rate that relationship, and particularly now that you have been in a tour of duty in Nairobi? Quite right. Our work has changed a lot because we have not been able to engage socially, which we are used to, especially diplomats, a lot of our work is built on, on contacts with people, uh, personal contacts, creating relationship, creating trust. This is, of course, not so easy in the new situation. But at the same time, I think we've also learned to use new means of communication. And I would say that uh, the, the virtual world has become much more known to all of us, and we have been uh, forced, if you will, to, to learn how to communicate there. But, but it also has opened up new possibilities, for instance, to arrange meetings with people on the other side of the globe and to communicate in a very direct with, way with, with someone who is maybe thousands of kilometers away, uh, or going over time zones, going over borders. So it opens up new possibilities to exchange views, to learn from each other and to connect. Uh, we just have to be able to, to grasp them. Uh, but I do hope that uh, at some point, if we cannot go back to normal, that we can at least go back to, to a way of, of interacting also in a more direct way with people. And I'm sure that 
through technology and, and innovative solutions, we will also be able to, to adapt uh, uh, to the new reality that we are all facing. And I think that, uh, that at least we in Finland uh, have some experience when it comes to dealing with the virtual world. Uh, we have many, you know, we have Nokia and other companies that have been working in this sector for a long time. So I'm hoping that we can maybe have some useful ideas to share also with Kenyans and, and Kenya also being a very, very well developed country when it comes to to the uh, internet, when it comes to the virtual world. I've been so impressed by, by you know, the knowledge here of young people and, and I think that there's a way for them now to connect directly with the world which we should use. Belgium government has been granting loans to the Kenyan government and uh, this is an issue that has brought a lot of, of uproar when it comes to citizens, Kenyan citizens' government engagement, and you've been able to follow. Do you think that the Kenyan government has been able to utilize the loans that the Belgium government uh, has been granting, you know, the, the Kenyan government? The, the, the government of Kenya and the Treasury has been always satisfied with, with you know, the services infrastructures that we've been providing. Uh, with the flexibility and the prag pragmatism of the Belgian authorities to, uh, you know, to tailor solutions for the counties, for, you know, the public institutions. We've always been, you know, uh, approached by, 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 by the, 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 the Kenyan authorities to provide more. But of course, there is always a limit uh, to, to what Kenya can pay and repay. And it's normal that uh, the Minister for Treasury, the CS for Treasury, is saying, you know, there are, there are limits to, to the things we can do. We have to pace ourselves. You cannot provide infrastructure everywhere in the country, just in, 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 in the lapse of a few years. This is a very long-term endeavor. Kenya and Tanzania have previously experienced, you know, frosty relations. Mm -hmm. Uh, commercial disputes and different perspectives mm. on uh, regional projects being at the heart of uh, that conflict mm. paint a picture of you know how the relation is now compared to before I don't want to call them I don't want to characterize the relation as frosty uh, although uh, in, uh, if we are talking about the recent uh, happenings although of course if you want to go back to uh, uh, the days of the East Africa community uh, and then that was not really Kenya, it was ESC, uh, and then ESC uh, went into, you know, uh, and we went into challenges, we experienced challenges at the ESC community. It was rekindled by uh, our President Moi and President Mui, and later on, of course, uh, also uh, the late President Kappa uh, did great work to try to bring us together. Uh, uh, President uh, Kibaki and President Kikwete really strengthened our relations after that, after we formed uh, the new EAC, uh, for the treat, signing of the new treaty. Uh, and what I see now, uh, of course, uh, President Magufud and President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, did their best to, to, re, uh, to affirm and to reaffirm that relationship that existed over the years. Uh, what, what you see now is President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and President Samia Suru Hassan is to enhance and to cement that relationship. And like I say, um, it would be wrong to say it's been frosty. Uh, we do have challenges. Um, uh, from time to time. Challenges of business or trade will always be there because the nature of business uh, uh, is dynamic. Um, but what's important is when those challenges do occur, then uh, leaders, including us diplomats, we should be in the forefront to try to resolve them before they become uh, 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 chronic. Uh, why are we doing that? Because uh, uh, a healthy flow of business and investment can only be good for, for our people, for, 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 for fighting poverty, for creating wealth, for creating uh, employment. Balozi, at the heart of this ties, trade diplomacy or economic cooperation between the two states started to drive. South Sudan has become a very important export destination for Kenya. Let us engage a bit about the economic cooperation between the two states. You know, as an ambassador, your role is to maintain Bill on existing relationship that was established by my predecessors and historical relationship that existed, we augment them by coming closer in different fields. Take, for example, South Sudan after independence. 
uh, in terms of let's say business Kenya is more or less they are leading quite a number of sectors in terms of business in South Sudan in uh, just immediately after independence the banking sector for example all the Kenyan banks KQ the airlines KQ basically is just like our, our national career because most people are using it South Sudan in terms of uh, Kenya exports 2013 just before the the conflict erupted Kenya exports to South Sudan was worth 250 million US dollars 2017 or 2019 it came down to 170 million US dollars worth export export from here to South Sudan Mombasa is our port of preferences close to 90% of what is consumed in South Sudan is actually come from Mombasa in fact we are the second larger use of the portrait after Uganda the same thing you looked at uh, in terms of our presence you know companies clearing and good agencies in Mombasa we are roughly around 400 to 242,000 TEU okay that is uh, when you translate those that kind of services into into monetary fund is a roughly around almost you are talking of millions of dollars in terms of share and co cost of transport and translating into handling and transporting agencies in Mombasa. But Lozi, at the heart of this good relationship lies key partnerships. What are the, what are the potential or current partnership between the two states? Yes. We can do much more. I told you that in 1985 a Belgrade company built the Kiambere Dam. I bought the leadership of this company two years ago and they spoke to your cabinet secretary who is in charge of water and dams. I w we were told that, uh, that Kenya could be building an, uh, up to 50 more dams. We are here and ready to, to help you build new dams. Uh, so, and we are here to build, uh, help you with infrastructure. We are, help to, we are here to help with the big four agenda. Uh, uh, affordable housing, health care, uh, manufacturing, uh, food. We, 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 we are hoping that we're going to have a visit of our uh, Deputy Minister of Agriculture where we can help uh, with your core maize and wheat production, uh, even fruit production. This is something that I talked about two, three weeks ago when I was in Belgrade. So Serbia helping the agriculture of Kenya, agriculture machinery, infrastructure, we can do all of that. On the cultural front, there is a museum of African art in Belgrade. This is coming from the fact that Yugoslavia was such a big and strong supporter of Africa in the 60s and we supported all the independence of all these African countries. We were together with you in the non-aligned movement and our ambassadors bought a lot of uh, our, our African art and artifacts and we have this very big museum. And last year I agreed with your cabinet secretary for sports and culture, Amina Mohammed, that in 2020 Kenya should be the main guest at this museum of art in Belgrade. And we were very excited that Kenyan artists uh, should be present in Belgrade. But because of COVID, this was postponed. But I'm hoping next year we can do that. So Kenya will, will be the top African country and one of the biggest uh, museums of African art in Europe. Balozi, talking of peace making processes, let us talk uh, more about building stronger partnerships with regional and you know, sub-regional organizations in the area of conflict prevention? Uh, we work very closely with our sub-regional organizations. Uh, the we have what we call the principle of subsidiarity. It is, uh, first and foremost, it's the, the responsibility to prevent uh, and manage conflicts lies with the member states. And then, uh, secondly, it's the, re the region. And then third, the continental body, and then globally. So we have that principle of subsidiarity. We work uh, hand in glove uh, together to try and resolve all the issues that we are faced with currently on the, on the continent. Um, of course, uh, we're not always uh, successful because the truth is uh, those in dispute, if they don't want peace, it's often difficult, but we, we, we keep working at it, we try.
right, the United States, Japan and South Korea are sending a clear message with their coordination on policy towards North Korea despite some